Hello again, it's Dawn. Welcome back and welcome to the newcomers. Um, I'd like to say I'm doing something totally different today, but I'm not. I'm actually, as you can see, going to pour down on another 15 inch, one inch thick, uh, sorry, 15 inch diameter, one inch thick wood round. Uh, these are pine glue edge that have been sealed with a spray varnish. And I'm doing the translucent base and another bloom halo. I've been working on a color palette for a few days, trying to come up with something um, different that would go well with the wood tones, the warmth of the wood. So I'm going to call out my colors as I put them down. If you've watched one of my bloom halo vi videos before, you kind of know the process and, and the technique and um, how to do certain things, but I will kind of talk through those as I go. I'm going to throw some gloves on. I'm trying to make the effort to make sure my videos aren't horribly boring and long, but that teach you something um, because I love to share the knowledge that I get from all the experimenting that I do. And I uh, hope that you guys try some of the things that I do successfully. So this isn't, uh, this isn't color to go in this container. I'm just using, reusing, recycling my container. So this is Glidden Premium Eggshell Deep Base, Base 3, untinted with Floetrol. American Floetrol and Matte Gel to thicken it because it does tend to want to be thinner. I'm not sure why. One would think a deep base, since they're going to add so much tint, would be thicker. But in this case, with the Glidden Premium, it is not thicker. It's thick enough, but it can't be too thick because if you remember from previous videos, this has to spin out quite a bit. You have to get a lot of that base off and you have to work quickly because it skins over quickly as well. And it's quite warm in my studio today, so it's probably going to skin over a little quicker. So I have to work quickly and methodically. So I'm going to get my base down and then we'll go through my colors. So if you remember, if you are a returning subscriber, which I hope you are. I'd love to have you all see the, the videos that I put out. So if you remember, this pillow is kind of tricky. You have to get enough down to move your, your bloom paints, but not so much down that you can't spin it off without spinning off your entire bloom that you've created. So wood has a has a very dry surface and it tends to have a lot of tooth and it wants to grab the paint, which is exactly the opposite of what we want it to do. But I've had great success with these. I have loved pretty much every one that I've done. I've had a couple that I scrapped, but that was early on. So it looks like I got the perfect amount of paint down. It looks really good, but there are a ton of bubbles. So I will, um, I will deaden the sound on this so you don't have to hear me slamming this. Okay, so I'm going to have some bubbles in this because I just, just mixed it. There's not a lot I can do about it, and I do need just a teeny bit more base. This helps to push that bloom out, outward from the center so that it doesn't um, kind of splash out in both directions because we want it to go out mostly. So I, when I did my, um, my dark base one, I actually did this and it worked out so well. So I spread that out a little bit. And once again, I'm going to deaden the sound. So getting out as many bubbles as I can. So the colors that I'm using 
in the order that I'm using them in. This is This Little Piggy Horizon. Gorgeous orangey sunset color. And again, once again, referring back to previous videos of my Bloom Halos, you want to stay within that, um, that first third so that you have room enough to blow the bloom and then to spin. So that ends up being just about here. And I do want to get enough down to get some really vibrant color in this one. I've gone with quite a warm palette with a couple of cool tones to just brighten it up a little. So that is the horizon. This is um, this is just a yellow gold pigment that I had. It's Arteza and Polycolor. And it makes a gorgeous yellowy shimmer with a ton of gold to it. But not overpowering because this is not going to be a gold bloom. So that's two pigments down and then an opaque. This is Amsterdam uh, primary yellow, azo yellow, with literally a pea-sized amount of uh, red. Just, um, oh my goodness, naphthol red. So this is opaque and I'm putting this on top of my pigments to create those peacock cells that we all know and love. But I don't want a ton of that either. And then I have Deco Art Garnet, which on camera is going to look really warm. It's not quite a berry, it's more of a wine color. And it's not as deep as a burgundy. Need to make sure I get plenty of paint down once again. And then this one is the surprise. This is a cool color. Cool-ish. This is a permanent red violet from Amsterdam. I love this color. I use it frequently. And then I'm using Amsterdam Copper. I played around with a copper cell activator and it didn't give enough contrast and it didn't add anything really to the bloom. So I, um, I omitted that as a cell activator, but I still wanted some copper. Um, I had originally had this on top of the mix. This is Thalo Turquoise. I took that out because it just didn't seem to go. And I went to a turquoise cell activator. This is a, um, this is a light turquoise. This is the Amsterdam. And it's mixed with Australian Floetrol. It's on the thick side. So I'm just going to kind of go right to this because once I drop the cell activator, I have to move right along. Uh, there, I've already had a bad blow. So let's hope that that doesn't ruin the whole thing. Maybe I need to have it right underneath me. That's better. Definitely right underneath me.
looking good so far from what I can see without my glasses on. It's really hard to hit this narrow line of cell activator. Aim is everything. Almost there, and I'm getting dizzy. Trying really hard not to get into that translucent pillow too much, but I just did in a kind of big way. Oh, okay. I'm really lightheaded, so give me a second here. <laughs> Put my glasses on so I can see what I've done. Oh, I think I got some really good cells. Just getting this out over that edge. It hasn't skinned over yet, so yay. Got some real warm weather coming. It's almost summer in Vegas. And it's either let the room get warm or have you listen to my AC or just do voiceovers. Haven't decided what's going to be the best case scenario. Okay, I'm going to give it a spin. Coming back this way. Just so I don't get too splashy on one side like I always tend to do. They always end up coming out fine. But I have to keep making adjustments. My whole paint corral and my spinners, everything is just a mess, covered with paint. And I haven't been real good at cleaning up my messes lately. I've been working with color palettes. I haven't had any commissions lately, so... Well, I did a couple of weeks ago, actually, but I um, haven't had one since, so I've been kind of working on color palettes and techniques and trying some different things. Okay, she is, for the most part, over the edge enough. And, oh, darn it, stuck my hand right in where it goes over the edge and messed up that bit of balloon. It's okay, I think I still have lots of paint on here, and this color is so vibrant. It's so dark. Intense, not dark. Okay, I am going to test to see how deep that paint in the middle is. These don't tend to, to crack, regardless. Um, it's, it's about two millimeters. 
and I think I'm going to do my design work and then that'll leave, leave me some room to uh, spin it another time or two before it's finished. So, get a paper towel to wipe my stick on. Oh, you know what? That's silly. I have a wet one right here. Okay. well balanced and wow crazy colorful I love it I'm going to give it another gentle spin and sort of let it keep rotating for just a little bit and this will soften those lines that I created with my skewer and my finger oh that stopped really quick Okay, it didn't push out a whole lot more, but it did blend well. So let me just about the same amount of paint. So it didn't move a lot, but I'm not worried about that. Um, what I'm concerned about are all these bubbles, which I'm going to, um, off camera, of course, take my skewer and just sort of pop the big ones and use my breath to pop the the smaller ones and hopefully those will come out so I'm going to clean this up um, clean the underneath and set it up on something so that you can actually see the size and everything and then I will be right back to do a flyover so here she is all ready for her close-up and just look at those peacock cells and that shimmer the turquoise was such a good choice, and I think this is going to dry incredible. I always hold my breath, hoping that my translucent base dries translucent. And I don't know why, because it always does. But yeah, that's the top, and check out these sides. That's as far as I can go on that side. So we will fly around this side for a bit. I can't quite get in there. I've got other things drying here on the side. I wish I didn't. But thank you so much for sticking with me and for being here. I appreciate you all. I hope you have a great week and a great weekend coming up. And I will catch up with you next week. Bye for now.